Okay, good morning. All right. So we're going to show you the results of uh, your estimates the other day, right? Did the quintile thing. Quintiles are strange a little bit for our brains. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the um, the, the interesting problem with the, the, the girl born on Tuesday, and that's a problem for your assignment. I'm, I'm very glad you, you said what you said, because it's a very reasonable thing to say, right? And and the question, it's right, so we get to talk about how you ask the question, because that matters. It's completely reasonable. You say you could goose anyone if you knew what you were doing, right? I mean, and there's a there's a nice, um, so let's, so I'll talk about that in a second, but let's, let's look at what you did with um, the, where is it? Yes, maybe here. Okay, so I made some slides for you, right. And you can com we'll compare you to the past and see how that goes. Hello, humans, come in. Okay, lots of uh, blip. Okay, so this is your estimated. Um, I've ordered them by the quintile, you know, the, the, the least to the largest in terms of what people estimated for. The, so this is the fraction of wealth, again, that the top 20% of people um, possess, the next 20%, the next 20%, next year, right. Okay, so we've got a range. Yeah, we've got a range in here, um, and, and and I'll talk about what, there's a study that this is connected to from about 2010, so I'll show you results from that. So, a bit of variation, this is what you think it should be, obviously, you know, right? So, there's a, there's a good section of everyone should have the same, so this is, I mean, this is not even communist, right? This is way beyond, this is just like, <laughs> this, is, this is right out there, yeah. It's Vermont, it's good, this is what we expect, but it's, it's right out there. Um, you may notice some other details. I did my best with the numbers, and I check, and I try to make sure it's all right. Um, but usually something funny happens. I try to explain it. So sometimes these things aren't always descending. They have to be, right? They can't be. And not everything added up to 100. So that was a, a glitch. All right, so that happens. But I'm glad you were here for that. So, um, But you see, you're, you're, you, know, there's, there's, um, you know, there's extremes here, right? Let's go back. There's extremes here. Right, this is a pretty. This is getting to kingdoms and serfs, which is kind of the plan, probably. Right, it's a big pyramid scheme, so we're getting there. Um, right, credit cards are some sort of distributed surf system. It's pretty clever. Uh, you work in other people's fields. All right, I'm commenting, but um, so so some I would say fairly optimistic at this point, but not so far off here. Usually the economist in the in the crowd. There's usually one floating around. Not always, but they will. They like to make it pretty uneven. All right, so this is comparing to the past. These are, I haven't done it every year for whatever reason. I think one was simply because I forgot to get the piece of paper. But um, so thank you for, for doing this. You can see there's different numbers of people in the class over the years. This is the uh, estimated wealth, right? The, the distribution of wealth. So you're, you guys are here. You can see that kind of, you know, right? They're stacked, so they're all gonna look like this. Um, but there's some optimism here, and then it gets a little more serious, and then there's extremes here. This is very extreme, and so on. So I'm not going to do any, you know, analysis of this. But actually, the initial one was pretty, pretty serious, right? A lot of people around 80%. And this is this little bar is kind of the average for what it's worth. It's a hard thing to do. Uh, so maybe, yeah, okay, you yeah. know, just looking at that that position there. You guys have, yeah, it's pretty much there, around 80%. Now, of course, things have changed a lot since this time. This is back in 2013, spring of 2013. Uh, and, you know, just the notion of 1%, that wasn't a popularized thing. It still doesn't mean anything, but it works, right? It doesn't functionally mean anything. Okay, and then this is what people want it to be. And, well, maybe, maybe you guys are more deeping into the, right? So always the uh, the people who think they're going to win in the pyramid scheme, right? They're, they're happy. Or maybe they're already up the top. So, you know, like, of course, you, yeah, how it should be. Yeah, but I would think the uh, the kind of the knee in this thing, right? You know, this is way up to a pretty mild 40% for the top 20. So no countries look like this, right? Like Scandinavia. No. This is, and we'll explore this a little more. It's just, it's just not there. Um, uh, later on, we'll talk about Gini coefficients because that's often used to make these comparisons. But really, what they're trying to do is turn one 
heavy tail distribution into a number. We like that. Then we can make a list. We can rank things. We love it. Humans love it. We'll talk about ranking later on. It's very problematic, of course. Okay. All right. So there's a little thing. Um, so that was good. Thank you. Well, there'll be a few other little games like that. Um, some might involve winning chocolates or something towards the end. So basically, I'll lure you with food. Yeah. What's up? I was really curious about the effect of Vermont uh, on the Zada. If you have any calling at some point in like in Texas or California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or a secret society of Yale or something. Yeah, so let's, I'll be able to show you some comparisons from a paper. So let's, let's have a look at that. Because, so you have a suspicion about which way that would move things, right? Well, uh, yeah. It's not going to move the other way. It's going to move. I have my guess, but I'm not making it. It's wonderful. Right. 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 Yeah, so. Yeah, and I'm not going to, yeah, you're right. You're very, this is very accurate. Um, but we're, I'm not going to ask people to identify themselves too much. So, um, Quebec is more about maple cartels and things, right? Which is a complicated thing to, to measure how it factors in. Yeah. Anyway, it's all pyramid schemes. We'll see. Um, okay. All right. So, we mentioned, I gave you this problem. We talked through it. We got upset about it, which is fair enough. You guys have been pretty good. I got an email once from a Probably, I mean, well, I won't say anything, but, 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 I mean, it sort of fits, but just a tirade of abuse about that problem to me. Like, you are harming your students, blah, 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 and it doesn't, you know, anyway. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, exactly. So, we've, we've talked about, we've sort of blabbered on a little bit about this one. The Monty Hall problem I didn't really touch on, but let's quickly discuss it. This is some stuff to do with logarithms. I'll just throw it there because the suggestion is that we actually do think logarithmically to start with, like babies can kind of think in that way. And um, certain you know, societies around the world you know, uh, who have limited languages in terms of numbers seem to kind of talk kind of like that as well. So you can, you know, you think, of, you know, it's one, three, 10. 30, 100, like that's, they're, they're evenly spaced. And certainly parts of our facilities do this, right? I mean, our, our um, you know, hearing and so on very much work in these scales. You know, music is all logarithmic. So we're quite happy with that. Anyway, um, okay, so that's just a little extra, some extra pieces. This is old school radio lab. It's, it's very enjoyable to listen to. We'll talk about Benford's Law later on, just quickly, but that's how you makes it hard to cheat when you just make up numbers and people are not good at cheating in a certain way. They're pretty good at cheating in lots of ways, but not this way. Okay, so Monty Hall problem. So, all right, so pro who hasn't heard of the Monty Hall pro problem? You just, yep, yeah, right. So it's cool. It's, um, it was a whole TV show, right? I mean, it was a whole TV show in, yeah. So there are a number of experiments that we can't do anymore because they were terrible things to do to other humans, but TV shows can, <laughs> so, so uh, we'll talk about that later on as well. The French uh, made what they called the game of death, which basically um, turns out to be one of the best social science experiments for a while. Anyway, so IRB puts a, puts a lid on that. All right, so the money hole problem, um, and the game, the game show was a bit, bit it fooled around with a bit, but basically, and I, I can remember when I was told this, I was in a physics lecture, my friend Andrew Powell asked me this question, and I remember, I'm sure I got it wrong. Um, so it's, so you're presented with three doors. There are variations of this, three doors, right? So let's just do on the board. And you, you can just sort of run this in your own head, right? So three doors and that's, you know, and this is sort of the game and that's why it's named after this. And uh, you, you, so there's one, two, and three. And that game, I think, was like two goats in a car, right? Goats are cool. I mean, I, this is, you know, goats are very useful. They do good things. They clean up the, yeah. Anyway, so a bit of a knock on the goats. Cars obviously destroying the world. Goats cleaning it up. Very good for poison ivy, actually. So, um, okay, so you've got goat, goat, car, somewhere. Right? And so it is, let's, not in that, the game they fooled around, but in this game, it's going to be completely random. 
you and your head choose one. So just choose one, two, or three. And then I will say to you, so we say, all right, so you've chosen three. So we're like, this is your choice. Then what I do is reveal, I open this door. And um, I mean, I feel, but right. So then a, you know, a goat pops out with its horns and starts eating all of the scenery, right? So goat. So I tell you goat. Now the question is, do you want to change? There's no money involved in this part either, right? It's just like, do you want to change? You have a free choice. Do you want to change your, and, and I know many of you have seen it, but for those who haven't, this is a very nice thing to think about. I mean, what is your gut feeling? Do you want to change? Sorry. Or is it just hard? I mean, does it feel like it should matter? I guess is the basic question. I mean, that's the trick. Like, I think, generally speaking, people's gut reaction is like, that can't matter. Like, how can this information matter? You've made a choice. It's sort of everything is true. Maybe there's something about quantum, but no goats. You know, anyway, so, so generally people don't think so, right? But what's happened is there were three possible worlds to start with, and they were equally likely. And I know what's behind the doors, right? So there's, there's there could have been goat, goat, car. Just leaving this aside completely. Goat, goat, car. Goat. Uh, goat, goat, let's make my G's. So these are all equally likely worlds. So if you've, if in this case you, and you've chosen this one, right? So this is, this is going to be the, the choice you make. So in each of these worlds, that will force me to reveal this one or this one. And here I have a choice. So this is where you see, like, it starts to affect how I, I'm behaving, even though it doesn't look like it. It starts to affect how I'm behaving. So in two, two thirds of the time, I'm forced to reveal where the goat is and the car is in the other one. So one third of the time you were right. So this could be the world, this could be the world, this could be the world. So these are all a third, a third, and a third. But because of what it forces me to do now, I'm actually giving you information you have to draw this in your head. You have to have this in your head somehow. Because it just doesn't, you don't intuit it, right? You don't just go, oh, oh, you know, you just, you can't do it. People can count a lot of matchsticks, apparently, but maybe that's just in the movies, right? But we, this is hard. Um, so in if, if this case you were right, so this is stay, change, you know, switch, I should say, switch. And so this is two thirds of the time if you switch, Right. So in this case, you want to change. In this case, you want to change. In this case, you would you want to stay. So if you change, you just don't, you go to the default of change. You, two thirds of the time, you'll be you'll get a car. It's very strange, right? And so, and you mentioned so Marion von Savant. Is that her name, Marilyn? Uh, maybe I don't have it right. I know I have some of this here, Marilyn. Uh, okay, so she wrote for Parade Magazine, I think, and she had this IQ of 200. That was sort of her story, puzzles, she would do puzzles. And she put this in and asked people what they thought. And she got all these letters from statistics professors saying, this is kind of like that, this is a crime against humanity, you're a terrible person, this is wrong. And, and then I have one other thing to offer in that uh, category, which is uh, Paul Edish. Edish apparently, right? So this great mathematician of the 20th century just couldn't, just thought this was madness and had to be explained in all these different ways, possibly still didn't like it. But there's a whole story written up about him just saying no. Um, you know, that's sort of a, a thing. Now, which I understand to be true, of course. It sounds like it might be made up, but no, I mean, this is just, this is just upsetting. Okay, all right. So you can explore it a little more, but that's a weird thing. Right? That's a weird thing. So never play cards, basically never play cards with anyone <laughs> unless you know what's going on behind the doors. Okay. I gave you this question. I asked you one more. What if we know that a girl's, one of the girls is born on, well, sorry, what if we know they have two children? What if we know that one of them is a girl born on December 31st? So not just a day of the week. What does that mean? Okay. So let's leave that. All right. So let's get back to our estimation thing. Oh, 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 yeah. No, there was another great thing. This is, great. This is fantastic. 
This is really, really superb. Um, I'm going to leave that. And so here's a piece about Edish and Monty Hall. The one I wanted to show you was, ah, that's bad. So it's going to be, um, yes, here it is. I'm sorry, I should have had this. Oh, no, I have, I have it. What am I doing? It's here. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is an experiment to train pigeons to do the Monty Hall problem, and they could get them to do it, but they couldn't get humans to do it. This is repeating it, right? This is not just one time where it's weird, right? This is repeating it without telling you, without, you know, explain, even though this might not have helped, without trying to explain how it works. It's just giving like iterating it and giving you tests and they were very nice to the pigeons you can read inside and they work weekdays and stuff. Anyway, that's the, I mean, again, a clickbait title, all right, fine in this case, maybe, but you know, the, the answer to this is, yes, um, is sort of the story. Pigeons could figure it out. You know, they had pretty simple rewards. Um, the reward for the academic is to say, no, you're wrong, which is much more satisfying and, and kind of the, the basic drive of most of them, right? You just see it all the time. Okay. Oh, more floor. That's good. Okay. Feels very tiny whiny. Okay, so money. Money is belief and it's got especially with the weird pyramid thing, what is going on? Okay. Um Stray has plastic money, which is funny. So uh Okay, so let's, let, these are these two questions I gave you, right? And, and, and so you, you work through them, and I appreciate that. Uh, and we had our nice examples. So this is from a study. It is by Mike Norton, and I have to say Dan Arely. And Arely, some of you might know, is in a lot of trouble right now for having maybe fabricated at least the data for at least one big study, which was about dishonesty. So kind of on the nose, right? So... There've been a bunch of people who, there was a Harvard professor who got kicked out for, uh, I think, I think, I think, you know, he, you know, he was sanctioned or whatever, but I think he's gone. But similar sort of thing was about dishonest. It was, it was fabricating data about macaques being evil to each other or something. Anyway, so, anyway. There's been a few recently, yeah. All right, so, Arely's part of this, so now I feel, you know, this has only happened the last couple of weeks, so now I'm just like, ah, I don't know. Norton seems to be a fine human being. All right. Okay, so wealth distribution. So uh, this is this is this is 2010, and my my references are messed up again. I need to run that again. Uh, all right, they should all be happy and alive, but they're not. So this is a maybe 2010 paper, I think, PNAS. This was um, the result of asking a bunch of people, right? This is the one you just did. This is their estimated. So people were, you know, and this is back in time. This is before the sort of 1% framing had and that sort of thing. And, and what, you know, Bezos was kind of going into space, but not really, and almost got rid of him. But, you know, like, anyway, so... This is people's estimate back then. You see, it's well below what you guys and, and people you know, in this class have done for many years, which is, you know, it's below 60% for the top 20. And, you know, the, the bottom 20 actually has something, right? But it's, it's, it's non zero. You can see it. Um, but if you look at the, and this is their ideal, uh, you know, a number of you did the 20, 20, 20, but it's not far, right? It's not far away from that. This is pretty, this again is extremely extreme, right? So we're kind of getting to your question in a second. And this was the actual at the time. This is maybe 2008 data, I think. Uh, so the top 20% had close to 85% of the wealth. The next 20% has about um, 10%. Then there's 5% for the next 20 and the bottom 40 is, you can't see them, right? This is indicative of a heavy tail distribution. It's the kind of thing. And heavy tail distributions are weird things. We're going to talk about them today. Talking about them in quintiles is also very, you know, just kind of throws you, right? So this this was a, a good, it was, I mean, I, I felt at the time a good way of asking people in a sort of a sideways way about something that's you know, easy to get wrong. So 
Um, all right. So I don't think, you know, I think your averages and, and the classy averages didn't really have this, right? That, that too much. Some people might have said that individually. They did. And they were more extreme than that. But on average, we didn't see that. Okay. So laws of decaying power. Some reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to draw the spike. It's just hard to do it. And I'll say, yeah. It's it is it is it is hard. It is hard. Yeah. I mean. You know, it's been escalating, right? I mean, uh, Mackenzie Scott made sixty billion by try while trying to give it away last year. Like she's trying to give it away. She's doing every. I mean, there's a limit to how fast you can give money away if you do it properly and thoughtfully. And I think one way I heard about you think about it is like, uh, how much money do you like go and pick it up on the on the phone? Uh, what's your threshold? What's your threshold? It's not a penny, right? Yeah, but no. like someone like Bill Gates will be like. He could smell a fifty. He could smell fifty thousand dollars. Like, okay. Fifty. Okay. So this gets a little bit at your very good questions. What happens if we do it outside of Vermont? Even though it's true that people are from other places. Okay. So this again is the uh, actual, and these are the estimated pieces here, and then the ideals, and then they're broken into various categories, right? So this is based on. Um, earnings uh, at the time it was Bush voted. That's the most recent data they had. Bush voters and Kerry voters. Uh, so it's 2004, and then men versus women. And then again the same brackets, but uh, broken into uh, by what their ideals are. So broadly speaking, you see the same stories, right? They're very similar, right? They're roughly the same. I mean that's the big story for this. Uh, this is real. You know, this was supposedly reality. This is what people thought reality was, and this is what they want reality to be. So you have people who, are, you know, Republican versus Democrat, men versus women. You can maybe you can you may, might feel like okay, like so people who are wealthier, it skews a little more. Um, Republican voters it skews a little more. Women are better than men, just true. So that's also goes the the right way. So these kind of you know do also. And, and, and it's both for the estimated and the ideal. They have the same little shifts, right? Um, but they're just they're just little they're details, right? They're just small variations on the big the the big result, which is we have no idea, and um, we want to be some sort of <laughs> absurdly um, equal place. So um, anyway, people have kind of enjoyed that. There's going to be another one of these things. That's enough for that. So there's a whole... Let's see what happens here. Okay. Heavy tail. He can have a heavy tail when he's very scared. It's very big. Which is pretty amusing. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Is this the same one? It's the same one. No, no, no. Is it the same one? No, Carlos. Um, okay, so we going to talk about this. So it's heavy tails is the most general thing, and then power laws is the um, next thing. I did really like Fargo as a kid, it's true. Um, okay, also cats. Uh, in the background, you can hear an ice cream maker. That is what that hum is. And it's um, maple syrup, water, and cashews. Yeah, delicious. A little bit of vanilla. Okay, been making that for like 20 years. So. Uh, so, you know, not a good Vermont person, I suppose. All right. Save Lavash. Okay, so we have, uh, this is what we're going to talk about. These things. We're going to play around with these things. They're a specific form of heavy tail. Like I said, heavy. there are different kinds of analytic forms for heavy tails. But basically, they're somehow, not just skewed a bit, but like super duper skewed, right? That's what we're into. And so these things pop up in reality uh, in many different um, realms. And there are mechanisms for explaining them. And we're going to go through sort of four big mechanisms for why they might come about. One is um, randomness, right? We'll always embrace the randomness. Whatever you can get for free from randomness, that's what you, you know, that's good. 
And then, you know, if you see some structure and it's explained by randomness, good. Uh, others will be, there's another one which is to do with uh, uh, translation between different variables, which is an interesting one, and that connects in other places, but it's, it's the connection between the variables that gives you the parallel tail, even though you've got some nice, well-behaved thing. That might seem a little nebulous right now, but, and then we have uh, a couple of others which will be uh, optimization in different ways. So there's going to be, um, well, this is going to be a random growth model. That's going to be, that's an incredibly important thing. Random growth model that you see that everywhere. So we'll call it as the rich get richer phenomenon. I mean, that's the general name that I'm going to use for it. Uh, there's optimization that through engineering or evolution, th these are the kinds of systems, these are kinds of distributions that get produced that produce something good, right? So I'm going to give you a bunch of examples in the world and sort of go back and forth with details about them. All right, so this is just a sort of a general story for it. So this little, um, so it's a sim in, you know, slash sim in LaTeX. This is just a little twiddle thing or tilde is just to say that basically it behaves like this, right? It's not, I, in, your, in your assignment, you've, you know, it's equals, you work with it like that. But generally speaking with reality, this, you know, it's, it's it, we have some decaying power uh, that is roughly obeyed. And often it's really for the tail. And then even with the tail, there's gonna be some cutoff, right? There's some limit to how big things can be. You know, if we're talking about earthquakes, they can't be bigger than, you know, the Earth's crust starts to, is, is a, a defining, scale for that and then there's just the planet right so okay so we're going to say this more you know this is just to be specific about it but it could have some sort of funny shape then a nice tail for a long way and then it kind of ends for some reason so but in the case that we have this we were talking about cutoffs and upper cutoffs for these scales um and then it's a it's a uh we, we did a lot of stuff with scaling it was always a positive generally a positive exponent not always but lots of you know all this Scaling examples, this is going to be a, uh, a negative exponent explicitly. So we'll write, this is always a, this is an important thing. This is mathematical sort of hygiene, you know, like you just, or clarity, like if there's something that's manifestly negative, you, you write, you always express the negative and, and put the little object here. So this is going to be a positive number, right? So we wouldn't write X to the, alpha and say alpha is minus three. That is going to mess us up at some point. So we're going to pop that in there. So again, we take logs, just as we did for the other scaling, but the, the negative sign is here. So again, it's log log plots, fitting uh, exponents to them, arguing about it, people getting upset. Um, that's the descriptive part. And of course, then there's explanation, as I was suggesting, we have a bunch of pieces to work through. It'll take a few weeks. Uh, again, we use log 10 because we're good people. All right. There's a, uh, let me, let me, we're, we're getting a scaling, so I will show you this because I meant to have it in there. Is it this one? Nope. Oh, no. What's this wired thing? Okay, so this is uh, this is something I meant to have in there. This is um, from Moore's Law. There's a little piece at the end of Moore's Law, which is Pixar, when they're putting this together, this is in the 80s, they figured out they just couldn't do it. Like, this couldn't bake these movies. It was just computationally, it was just too hard for computers. And certainly in the last 10 years for me, the things that are, you know, making a video is just, it just <laughs> explodes the machine. It's kind of an unbelievable thing. So it's still true, but... Yeah, they figured out, and I was talking with Disney about making this thing, and there's a lot of blah here. Uh, I'm like, no, we can't do it. It'll take us maybe 15 years. And because they literally just looked at Moore's Law and just said, now we'll be able to do it then in the future, just trusting this thing would keep going. And it, it certainly did, and they did it, and they did pretty well. There's a funny little piece. Yeah, most of this is just writing. There's a funny little piece here where it says, I thought this was a bit of an odd No, um, I mean, factors of 10 are orders of magnitude, but they're just saying that like rhetorically, it's nicer to use the term orders of magnitude because that just feels like something else is happening. And we're going to come back to this when I um, go back to more sort of fundamentals, which is 
this 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 little piece there, and I don't I guess they're quoting sort of or alluding to Phil Anderson, very famous um paper in the 1970s saying complexity is a big deal. And you physicists, of which he was one, stop it. You're not doing the only fundamental, like just calm down. There's fundamental research all the way up and kind of explain why. And, and the title of that was More is Different. Which is puts you away from scaling because Moore's law is actually more is the same, right? Scaled and scaled and scaled and like it's the same thing, just scaled up. But there can be uh, certainly cases where the game at the next level is different. The game is the next, right? So we're not we're not just sort of scaled up DNA or scaled up cells or scaled up, right? We're some high level object. That pigeons are smarter than, and um, we just have to accept that. All right. But I just I just want to I just want to shoehorn that in and also just say something about my stand. And, anyway, all right. I guess it does sound better if you say orders of magnitude. All right. So okay. Uh, so again, like I said, the tail is the thing that we're often looking at. Um, and we'll still say power law size distribution. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's the name of the set of slides, but power law size distribution. Uh, so we, you know, we're sample, you can think of it as sampling from something, right? So here's all the historical earthquakes. Let's sample from them, um, just as you might from any distribution, Gaussians, exponentials, you know, what, what's the typical one you get? What's the average? You know, you start to think about the very basic things. Uh, and we'll look later on at what uh, the, the distribution is for epidemics in history, which is worse than, worse than this. It's terrible. Okay, so from from where we have actual data, because it's a hard hard thing to remember. Um, you will see in the literature to some extent. You know, people will say this is the more general term. I think people will use now because they don't want to say things are power laws necessarily, which is fair enough. You'll see fat tailed as well, which is a little you know. I guess so. As I said, there are other heavy tail distributions, lots of other things. Log normals can masquerade in this kind of way. They sort of have a one over X thing happening. Um, so there are little explosions in the literature of no, 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 it's not even a power law, it's this. Okay, we'll see a bit of that. Okay, so let's do, uh, look at some examples. Many, so there are many things that have um, discrete sizes, right? So words are, are a great example and um, just, just just an incredible example. Uh, networks, which has been the big explosion in the last 20 years, and I will give you, well, I'll give you a whole spread of stuff from networks, but really some deep historical pieces as well. Uh, lots of things are very nicely countable, right? Citations for articles, you can look at Supreme Court decisions, like how they're referenced, for example, so any, any kind of thing like that. Wikipedia, um, where you have citational structures or reference structures. Um, so in those cases, then we're going to, we'll, and this is just a notation thing, but we'll usually use K. You see K a lot. Um, it's funny, there are very normative choices about what things, you know, so K can't be a continuous variable, right? You can't, that would be just wrong. Like, what do you even do? X, Y, Z is fine, blah, 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 all these things. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just sort of, yeah. So I, J, K, and then you sort of have to go to L, but it looks like an R. All right, okay, so discrete thing. Uh, obviously explodes for K equals zero. So again, this is a tail, right? So it's, it's the tail we're talking about. There's some maybe, you know, rolls around a little bit, has some kind of, again, perhaps quite explicable structure for a small K. Um, and maybe uh, you also see things like the K plus something, right? There's a K plus um, some offset that can arise analytically that would push it away. There are some famous old corpora, and these are odd corpora to look at. This is uh, one that was used, it's been used a lot traditionally. Um, we have much, I'll give you a much bigger one to work with uh, based on Google's trawling of the web, uh, just, you know, subsuming stuff. Uh, it's a little little dated now, I suppose, but so it won't have BTS in it, for example, um, which BTS is a huge deal, and I discovered it because I was looking at Twitter. Um, look, looking at these distributions, basically. What is this thing? And then I Googled for BTS. It's also how I found out the Jonas Brothers broke up. Yeah. Because they're, they're kind of, they're, they're, they're being talked about distribution went whoop, in 2015. But now it went back up, which is exciting. 
Uh, so lots of things appear in, in um, you know, spe so especially where you have, like I'm just alluding to, corpora. So you have one of these kind of, this is a distribution, right? You have these kind of distributions for, if, if they're temporally evolving, right? So you could take the New York Times, you could take Twitter, you could take Wikipedia, even like the shells, you know, the, um, uh, the, the, the snapshots of it over time, Reddit, whatever you like. What everyone just said yesterday, you know, if we could record all of those things, which of course Amazon is doing, so that's nice. Um, so, you, and, and you could look at how they evolve, and we'll talk about how to, how, that's a, that's a dip, turns out to be a nice, difficult problem. But this is very typical of English, right? So there are functions, words at the front, the is usually hanging out, doing pretty well for itself. Um, in this particular corpus, the is about 7% of words, right? I mean, it, it's usually more like 4%, but, and it depends on the, you know, the, the space you're in, uh, but yeah. So and these are these are moving down in, in, and you can see they kind of start to fall away, fall away, fall away, and then you get long periods of in these tails where basically everything's the same. This is only after two thousand words, and here we got some pretty. These are pretty, um, you know, recognizable. These are fine words, right? Um, so this is an English data set. And let me just say, so this is a weird thing because they're just smushing things together. They're just taking, I think, radio things, some written stuff, and they're just tipping them into a bucket. This is an older thing now. That might have been a politician. I don't know exactly, right? I'll mention that in a second. Uh, something about that in a second. So, um, yeah, that's pretty weird. So it's from a period in time. And if you, there are quarter hour periods on Twitter where BTS has been the number, BTS underscore TW2 has been the number one word. So if you think about average, if you want to go into marketing and make things, you know, take off, if you walked in and said, I will, you know, I will make Coke it, like I will make it it, I will make it as common as, as it, where is it? It is number 12. That's actually about true on Twitter, actually, still, even recently. Um, they would think you were, cr you know, crazy, right? And, um, but, but actually in terms, so, so something like Twitter is completely different because you have retweets, right? You, so now you're getting the popularity. However, it's manufactured. Of course, there are bots and there. I mean, BTS literally has an army, right? I mean, they have an army, right? So the question as to how much of that fandom is, you know, uh, mechanized is, is, is another thing, right? But um, it's, you know, there you have this social amplification, which is something that you want to measure. So you want to measure that about books or movies, right? You want to measure their popularity, right? You want to have that encoded. This doesn't have that because this is just like, this is like taking the New York Times and saying every paper counts, so we're just going to have them all. And that's a useful record. It's still going to have this, it's still going to have this underlying uh, incredible tale of popularity because language works like that. There's still going to be the at the top, right? But it's not going to tell you, you're losing like which articles were read, which ones were shared, the different kinds of things. And that's where you want, that's what you want to measure to get cultural, you know, relevance or, or popularity. Um, so Trump was in the, for what, just words, because you look at two grams and three grams, like combinations of words, Trump was in the top 300 words for four years straight, every day on Twitter. Just incredible, just incredible. And I can show you some plots on that later, but it's, there's just, there's the only, the only entity that would beat him out and not always was BTS. And they, they're competing with these words. They weren't competing with other, you know, maybe something dramatic would happen on a date, but they were, in terms of just words, they were competing with these words. So, um, yeah, it was on every time. So I called, I have a paper, I called it ultra fame, right? Because God, the word for the word God is about 300. Its median is about 300. It's very durable over at least 10 years of Twitter. So sort of as a bit of a, the Beatles, are, you know, more popular than Jesus kind of line, use that as a benchmark for ultra fame. Anyway, BTS, amazing. So there are lots of things to play around with in this way. Like, you know, people have tried to kind of visualize it because it is sort of as we're thinking, talking about hard. This was, a, I think it's dead now, but this was a, a beautiful visualization by Jonathan Harris, who's done so many amazing things over the years. He went to Princeton and then became kind of a scientist artist, but he's really from here. And he, he I think he might live back on Shelburne Farms, where, which is his sort of family is from. So... Very interesting character. We've had him around, and some of his 
one of his works was an inspiration for the stuff we did with measuring happiness. Anyway. Okay, so this is um, this little game where, you know, it's gray, black, gray, and you could just see it, and you could just comb around in this thing. This is where, this is out to, so this is out to 55,000. The other ones are about 2,000. So now we're getting out to, I mean, turbo prop, okay. You know, these are still things, but it's getting a little messier, right? He did some other funny things. He, 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 um, because there's a search thing. So he looked at what people search for. Of course, that wasn't, you know, again, you, you think pigeons really are smarter than people. Probably more decent, I suppose, is what to say there. Um, what do pigeons search for? Probably just food. Okay. Um, this is another effort to sort of play around with this. So XKCD, many of you will know XKCD, the name of that. Apparently, was created to uh, be unpronounceable in any other way than saying XKCD, right? Like that's yeah, very very clever. So um, this is so this whole book, I think, I think it's the top one thousand words from a particular corpus, right? Yeah, and again, what's that corpus, right? It's not from music lyrics because that would be limiting, or Twitter. You wouldn't want to explain this by you know trying to use the names of the BTS members or something. But this is, this, this whole book is explain, like, a, you know, an encyclopedia, but using words that only appear in the top 1,000. So it's a little game he made for himself. So a submarine is a boat that goes under the sea. Submarine is not in the top 1,000. You can't do it. So you're going to start, you know, for room for planning where to go, doors for city burning machines, door for, you know, so it's, yeah. Push it instead of a propeller. All right. So you can play around um, with these things. So this is Kahneman. Oh, I have a little stupid poem. So a scrolling voyage to the citational abyss, starting at the surface, the lonely giant citations, moving down to the legion of strange, sometimes misplaced, unloved creatures that dwell in Kahneman's Google Scholarship. So let's go and look at that. Uh, so this is Daniel Kahneman, who because the Nobel, Nobel Prize is just ridiculous, but it's, um, you know, they, they, one of the enjoyable things is they don't give it to everyone who deserves it, but also especially if they're dead, right? So that's a problem. So Tversky, famously, kind of a Tversky or a team, but uh, Tversky uh, passed away in the 90s, I think. Um, so he doesn't get it, but clearly he should. So this is kind of ridiculous. If you're familiar with Google Scholar, this is a pretty disturbing number of citations to get every year. Uh, but you can see, you know, they were, they were doing okay back here. There's 2,000 citations a year is a lot, um, especially back in 1990. But, yeah, just exploded. So this is a vast number of citations. This is hard to explain. This is 450,000 citations. So Google's Google has – they added this thing when they made Google Scholar, which is excited because they're trying to contend with power laws, right, or these heavy tail distribution systems. Um if you get 10 citations for a paper, they'll count it. Like that's what, that's, there's a little bit of excitement. So uh, that's what this is. 370 papers have been cited at least 10 times. You can imagine 100, 1,000 index and so on. And then the H index, named after a person themselves actually, uh, it's the Hirsch index, which there shouldn't be. But it's, this is another way of trying to get it at one of these heavy tail distributions and turn it into one number. And at least there are more than one thing here. This is the, this says that Kahneman has 155 papers that have each been cited at least 155 times, which is a lot. It's a lot. I mean, just getting one citation is a huge differentiator, and I have a graph of that somewhere. I think half of all papers, I think that's right, have been cited zero times, right? So if you get to one, and we'll have some other results on that too, and it's to do kind of with pyramid schemes. Like if you never get off to use a cricketing term, the mark, if you never get that first uh, citation, then, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. And the expected time for your first citation is sort of infinity. Uh, okay. Yeah, the extent to which everything is a pyramid scheme is, a, is perhaps a good question. So let's see. So this is just going to, if you can see this a little bit. So, you know, these, these are ridiculous numbers of citations for just, you know, one paper. At this point, it's like saying air is important to breathe, citation, like start of universe or something. You know, like it's, 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 it's a lot. Anyway, so, and of course, Kahneman's become enormously popular. 
But as you go down, so you see there's a gap, right? So these big gaps, and then these are these are the citations, I'll call them, right? So this is these are these giant whales of papers that have over 10,000 citations. That usually means you've started a field. 10,000 citations means you've started a field. And so there's a bunch there, and which of course they you know, basically have, right? But behavioral economics is not basically, that's what they've done. So it goes down and then they start to, you'll start to see them get closer together. Uh, let's just sort of go to the bottom. I mean, these are all still, you know, if you have a paper that's been cited 400 times, it's pretty good, it's good. You know, this is pretty good. This also varies tremendously by field, right? So, you know, if you go across fields, some just the citation maniacs, they publish a billion papers. Um, now you'll start to see them get closer together. We're gonna to get more and more ties, which are important things mathematically to deal with as well. Uh, so, you know, there's a bunch on 144. This is of course based on Google's big machine that runs around trying to find things that cite other things. You know, it's, it's not bad. Um, certainly destroyed anything that came before it. 50, da da da. I mean, this is, if you wanna, if you wanna see something about a professor, I mean, and this is what we do, like, you know, they can say, you know, so you look at Google Scholar, if they don't have one, my God, and then um, rate my professor, yeah. Like, Good intel, what's that? Is there a paper that it's like, when is too much citation, like when too many citation, is just too many, and we, just, we should just have thrown it, like, after 10,000, we just, just like, cut off, and not go anymore, because- You mean you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have decided anymore? Well, we just shouldn't like keep track anymore, because it would be like, mess with them or something, we just want to start keeping in, so it doesn't- Oh, no, no, okay, we'll talk about that. There's absolutely the Matthew effect all the way through everything. It doesn't matter. Like, so, so people, so you look at the most, anything that's gotten to 10,000 citations, that is gonna have, and people have done some studies on this. And I remember seeing a talk years and years ago, it was two professors talking about their own paper and how they were interested in how well, it being well cited and they wanted to, the sociologists, they wanted to look at what those citations were. So it's connected to Merton, right? So those kind of people, which is the Matthew effect. And they wanted to look at what the, you know, what that kind of body of citations was like, like who's using their paper. And they were a little shocked to find that 90% or more were just like, things are interesting. Yeah. So that's absolutely what happens. There's just no way around it. And so, you know, networks, right? So complex networks are important. They're everywhere in the world, citations one through 23. And it's just, that's it. And the extent to which a paper is truly examined and thought about is, is another thing. I do have a very self-referential one, which I'll show you later with, with all of this, which is about Barabasi's scale-free scale networks paper, which doesn't have that in the title, but it looks at all the titles that have that later on and whether there's a rich gets richer thing. Okay. Sorry, that's a lot of, so, so now we're getting out. So, you know, it's been a festival of publications. Now you see long stretches. These, these, this is just very typical of these things, I'll just get to the bottom and then I'll ask, uh, you can ask. Um, right, so we're gonna see a lot of eights, a lot of sevens, and let me let me try to find the bottom. So now we're in the abyss, right? We can't, there's no light anymore. There are some strange animals here with their own little sets of lights. And this is what I, I was trying to say that uh, we get some, this is a citational abyss. We get some things that just aren't right, right? This isn't, this says Kahneman, See, this is reviewing fast and slow. So this is a little cunning, but I think it's a review of maybe Kahneman's book, but it's not Kahneman's paper anymore, right? So now we're, for good reason, he's not curating his Google Scholar page, right? Um, so then we get to the ones, and now we get to zeros. There, you know, he has zeros. Oh my God, oh my God. This is the hundreds of papers here that have never been cited. So we get to, and then the question is, you know, are they really Kahneman papers? It's very unclear at this point. Now it's gotten to like these misshapen titles and, you know, these are the things that kind of drifted to the bottom and got eaten basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see it because you can still look at it because that is, I mean, keep looking at it because that is insane what's happened. Yes, 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 yes. No, I think and it's exactly the thing. Like COVID, 
is an input is a you know, developing pandemic. Blah blah blah. They just cite them, right? They just cite those papers. Yes, I think there's one from Johns Hopkins. Yes, uh, and we'll we'll see how far we get with this. But I this is too interesting. Google Scholar, COVID. Let's just see. Um, you know, it, I mean, this one has 2,500 citations, and it was published last year, right? I don't even. I mean. This is not ordered, and I could, we could search around more, uh, some more. But this is, yeah, these these are insane numbers. So you have people, and they're also like a hundred people in the paper. They have sort of no citations, and then their citation thing goes. Pfft. So, which is fine. It's just like there's, there's a, you know, I mean, the ramifications everywhere, and it's just this imprint in the scientific world is, you know, an interesting one. I'd like to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that was a nice big, you know, we had 800 examples, which isn't actually that many, right? So if you take a, uh, a day of Twitter and try to break it up into everything, which includes emojis, which turns out to be a hellscape of an activity, like really bad, really bad. They're not separate UTFA things. They're just, there's like eight sometimes. It's a monstrous problem. And one of our, yeah, one of our uh, PhD, Thea al Shabi, he basically can't use it, emojis ever again. So really hard work. But, you know, if you break it up, then you get to many millions of distinct ob text objects per day on Twitter, just in English. Millions, right? And there's no way we, our, our vocabularies are like tens, on the order of tens of thousands. We don't have that many words. Were you? I thought I saw it. No. Okay. All right. Spork it on. Uh, so let's just, so, so Kahneman, I think, was helpful. That's very typical, right? There's something off the top. You know, the top ones are a little bit, maybe there's some, you know, a couple that might be somewhat close to each other. There's usually one that's further ahead because of this acceleration process. It gets pulled away. Um, and then down the bottom, you get these ones that are kind of stuck. You know, people aren't, and people aren't going to now go to the bottom of that list and say, I wonder what Kahneman's papers are that aren't cited very well. Like, that's just not going to be interesting even though I forced you to look at it. Um, where are some of the spaces you might do that, right? So what's, you know, what's being left behind? Okay, so this is just the Gaussian distribution, just a Ga straight up Gaussian distribution. This is what it looks like on a log log plot. Okay, so it's still a lumpy thing. It's made a mess of it. It's turned to, you know, created this kind of skew. All right, so I guess you could try to do this. At least think of it in your head. I know no, no one uses paper anymore, but sketch one over X, from x equals one to 10 million. You're staring at me like, what is a pencil? Okay, which I understand. Does this thing still work? Huh. Right, so. This is x, one, 10 to the seven. And we're going to start here, somewhere up here, p of x. Just draw it. I think you've drawn it, if you've got to think a bit instead of pencils. All right. So the temptation will be to, generally speaking, and you don't have to have done this, but it's going to be to draw like a 1 over x thing. But that's not what it looks like. It looks like this, right? It's... And this is this is the uh, uh, this is the the brown corpus, right? There's an example that just goes. Whoop. So if you plot one of these things, you're gonna think nothing's going on, right? There's just only the only thing that matters is, is here. So if this was a plot for earthquakes, and you said this is the earthquake distribution, this is the you know this is the biggest one here, blah blah blah. Um, or in this case, it would be his. Okay, it will be, here's the number of little ones. We're going to flip it in a bit. Here's the number of little ones. Yep. So there are lots of them, and occasionally there's some really big ones. It's, it's very hard to see. So if we put it on a log-log scale, it, it, 
now we can see we do have a something looks like a parallel size distribution. Again, this is this just this small data set, this brown one. Um, it's got this reasonable behavior. This is um, the word the is out here, right? So this is frequency of usage. And it's, I've, I guess I've made it, um, no, it's frequency of usage uh, in percentage. So this is, this is the, and I think maybe it was of and so on. So you can see it's just, it's hard to see this, but there are just little points here. And then we start to get, here are all the words that at least in this corpus um, appeared only once. And so you can imagine, of course, if you just take a page, you take a, a paragraph, you know, you take a, a chapter, you take a book, you take uh, a whole shelf of books, you take a library, this skew is going to, this in this way, is going to keep going this way, right? We're still going to have the out here, but we're going to get these more rare words that we only find once in a library. Right? There's a word that's just only appears in one book in this whole library. And when we, there's a word, so that's hapax legomenon, right? There's a Greek term for that. So, we'll, so this is important because there are, while this word, while you might find this word, it only appears in this one book, that's it, very rare. Um, they're, they're legion, right? So the rare are legion in these kinds of distributions. There's the, there's the big monster the, and then there's the, the most frequent are the ones that appear once. And we'll see that typically for something like language, about half of the, if you, so again, types and tokens. Types are the, the lexicon. That's your, that's your dictionary. This is a list of possible things. It's your list of species. And then there's over in the forest or in the library, you know, there's the actual words being used, right? So these are the tokens or the species, right? You've got lots of ants, right? So ant is a species. And then you've got all these individuals. So the, the, the type is ant. And then all these tokens are ants, right? And they're all special. So um, yeah, when you yeah, when you do that, when you go back to this this part, which is just your list of species or your list of words, like the glossary, and think about how many times each one of these appears, half of them will appear once, roughly. About half of them only appear once. So it's a very, you know, it's a, that's a very interesting structure. One of them is going to be, probably one of them is going to be very frequent relative to all the others. It's going to dominate. Then there's going to be next one's dominating, da, da, da. There's going to be so this hierarchy down to these rare ones, and in and of themselves, they're not, you know, they, they might seem relevant, but there are half of your lexicon only appears once, which makes it very difficult for translating ancient Greek or something, like things where you only have one text. Because that's, if it's really a language, it's going, this is a very strong um, structure that's, that appears over and over. Okay, so then we're going to do something with this. This is a bit, you see, this is a little speckled and messy. This is a small distribution. Um, and again, this is, you know, this, this, is, this is how many words appear this frequency of time. So this is, there's only one V, there's only one of. With that, you know, there's only one word that has that, the same frequency of occurrence. Uh, but we, these are where we have two of them, we have three of them, four, five. This is a logarithmic structure. So now you're getting occasionally two words that have the same counts, right? So one way to mess around with that is to say, let's look at the, and the notation I'll use is this. So this is the number that are, and it could be greater than or greater than or equal to, probably Number greater than or equal to Q. Sometimes called the exceedance probability, but generally Q, the complementary cumulative probability. So um, distribution. So it's a CC, um, or it could be a CCDF, could be just distribution function. You'll see various versions of this, but it's the CC part is complementary cumulative. So that's the opposite of the normal cumulative, because that's what's the probability that something is less than a number we're going to say, what is the probability that's greater than a number? And we do that because, well, I'll show you, but we, we do that because it cleans up this distribution nicely. Now, these, this is um, dropping, only dropping, right? It's not jumping up and down because as you pull back from a number, you say, how many, how many words appear greater than this frequency? As you dr draw back, that number can only increase. Yes. And eventually you get down to the lowest frequency, which is one divided by the total number of words in the corpus. 
And then all of the words have to be um, uh, uh, at least that frequent. Sometimes called the exceedance probability. I guess I have some words of fun. So um, there's a little test you can play with. I won't do it here, but uh, where it's an interesting way of getting at these distributions because it gives you somewhat easy words and you answer them. Maybe you get a few wrong. And then based on that, we'll try to push you further deeper into the distribution, right? So if you get all of these right, you'll sort of go farther into the distribution, ask you some rare words, and then try to estimate your vocabulary based on that. So Dr. Bailey, who knows who Dr. Bailey is? Okay, so this is a tr just UVM's terrible branding. We have the spelling bee guy, right? He lives just around the corner from me. I'm like, yeah. So Jacques Bailey is the spelling bee guy, the guy who asked the, right, the, the question guy in, in the spelling bee. He's been for 20 years. I've had to tell the former provost to like talk about him because it's just stupid. Anyway, they... Uh, you know, he's on ESPN with ads and he goes on the Today Show or whatever afterwards and all sorts of things happen. And he's changed the way they do it because, or, you know, collectively because now you have to know, know what some words mean. Uh, but anyway, Bailey, uh, Jacques, he, he won it in 1981 or 82 as a, you know, a kid with elucubrate, which means to study into the night. It's got midnight oil in the, in the, in the meaning, which is quite lovely. Uh, but he's in, uh, you know, Aquila and the Bee, right? If you watch that, that's an older movie now. But, I mean, he's just, he's, you know, it's a kid who wins the spelling bee. And, it, and, and they have him just in there doing the questions. So it looks real. Anyway, he's a classics professor here. And, of course, UVM uh, has decided to get rid of classics. So, but he, he's super famous. Uh, I mean, he's, he's done spelling bees around the world, like in Korea. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a celebrity. And, like I said, there are very funny ads uh, online, but all right, well, maybe we'll come back to that. But his his is you know huge, sixty thousand. I think he has some story that if if you can ask him a word that he can't spell, you get an A for the course. <laughs> With some rules, okay. So these are some. Um, that was just a little fun aside. There, here's one of these exceedance probabilities again. This is uh, probably that a uh, earthquake has at least some magnitude. So again, we're going to see it just monotonically um, drop. Or, you know, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so here's the magnitude. This is the counts over some time. Um, this slope is, a, is minus one. And then, you know, this is a sensing thing because we don't care about tiny ones. And then there's a scale, there's a limit to how big they can be because of the Earth thing. Uh, yeah, this is this is a good plot. I mean, many orders of magnitude, um, and and this is you know this is a this is a tough thing to look at, right? So a lot of work has gone into predicting earthquakes. Some Italian scientists were put in jail a few years ago for saying there wouldn't be some saying there wouldn't be any uh, aftershocks or something and getting it wrong. I mean, just a terrible business, anyway. So um, I have various colleagues who've worked on this over the years, and you know, part of it is just mapping out like the, uh, the in great detail, um, you know, th places where things can fall apart. Okay. Uh, very awkwardly, and they're not cited here properly, but one of these was just a, in some normal journal. The other one was in PNAS as an invited paper. They put the same paper in two journals, which is just like, oh my God. Um, anyway, so... Per Barker is very famous in all of this. We'll mention him again later on. So I do tend to call this the statistics of surprise, right? The, the, the um, statistics of normal distribution, which is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing result. I mean, e to the minus, it's an incredible object. Uh, and we see that over and over again. So that's a great universality story. But it's pretty boring, right? So this is, um, this is statistics of surprise. Everything is fine. So this is... Uh, this is after the, the you know, terrible quake off of um, Japan. Uh, and, you know, in the past 300 years, right, no earthquake similar to that. Uh, and then they have a piece here, right? So, they, you know, it makes it very hard to predict, of course, right? Very dangerous, right? So people just didn't expect this to happen. And there were stones made, I think, in maybe the seven, eight hundred years ago and just put into the ground and said, do not build beyond this point. 
so hundreds of years go by and and of course now the buildings are here and that stone is way back up there and i mean these are just many many generations of people so these are at this scale very difficult here's an odd one this is another complementary cumulative uh it is complementary cumulative it's not written that way but um people have had some great fun with uh you know some some of these sort of data sets that have appeared online and this is uh it's a good network story but it's a fraction of the ingredients that appear in, in in k recipes right so you're looking at the most common ones down to the rarest ones so same kind of story so again that kind of imprint of many many ingredients right so you've got this lexicon this list of types and then you they appear in things in this case you know not paragraphs but recipes or stories they're in recipes um, and and you end up with one of these distributions again. Of course, the traditional English one, if I may have a zing, is just yeah, right. salt and pepper and maybe mustard. Yeah. All right. So these are going to be big pieces. We're going to look at Herbert Simon's paper uh, from a while ago, 955. You know, and I do wonder. This is an incredible paper. I mean, it's just a great paper. And you'll work through one of the mathematical um, derivations. But it's just so hard to know now, like how many people are involved, right? Because it's just another example. I, I mean, I've sort of had my doubts more recently about this one. He's a genius, you know, I mean, there's no question. I mean, I think he does have that. Very few people probably should be called that. I, I don't know. Well, maybe I shouldn't even say that. I don't know. But incredibly productive, you know, did amazing things. And this is a, this is a, Extraordinary paper in the in the last hundred years, I think. Terrible title, terrible title, just absolutely awful. And so we'll we'll address those things later. On. Mark Newman has a good summary of um, power laws uh, in this paper, and then there's this work by again Newman, but uh, Aaron Clausette, who was just here, he gave a talk in the uh, computer science um, uh, research day. Uh, and uh, Cosmo Shalizi, who's at CMU. Anyway, so this is a way of measuring power law exponents, generally thought to be the way to do it. Um, probably has five, 6,000 citations now, I think. Monstrous. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is just a few more examples in here. Just to kind of really push it. This is from the Newman one. So again, word frequency. We'll see that this is a bit of a funny one, actually. Word frequency is the most famous one in some ways, right? This is Zip's stuff, and we'll talk about Zip. Two orders of magnitude, it looks pretty good. But actually what you see most generally, and we had a student in this class, Jake Williams, who's now a professor at Drexel, figure out that, well, I guess I had actually personally observed this myself and wondered what the hell was going on. And then it turned out in the last 20 years, people had started to notice that there's often a break in scaling in these distributions for words. Uh, and Jake's paper, um, well, I, I think it holds up. There are various ideas for what that might be, but basically he was able to show that this kind of, this point where the scaling changes is um, reflective of the average length of a book, right? So there's a mixing going on because you just put a whole library in together and mix all the words up. But of course, at the scale, of, the books are their own little forests, right? Their own little special forests. And then you're kind of smudging them all together. And you, so you're doing something a little funny. That scale should matter. And it seems to. Many other things don't have any such break. Um, these, these regions are to indicate where it's not scaling well according to their measure. So you can see this is fine. This is completely fine. This is what I was saying. Like it, it could be any, you know, some nice reasonable rollover shape. That's fine. Oops. Um, but at this point, so we're just block that out. And then the scaling is sort of, you know, statistically kind of okay. You know, you can see this sort of falling apart here, a difficult problem, right? You might want to chop that off and say, this is the real scaling because you're running into, uh, you know, some, some outer scale and, and that's going to maybe change the, the distribution. What we'll see with Simon's model is remarkable is he gets both ends of the distribution pretty right. Okay. So let's look at these. These are, this is, these are, uh, areas of, um, these are cr moon craters, right? This is just moon craters. This is a strange, it's moon craters, right? So all different sizes, they fit together in that way. These are solar flare intensities, which apparently drive all of culture. So that's interesting. Um, 
Isn't there a good there's a good conspiracy theory about that it has to be. Alright, so let's see. If I got pink, maybe I've got that wrong. I know there's H is oh it's yeah, it's solar flares and I was oh yes, oh yes. They're not labeled very well. This is intensity of wars. And so this is in this it's a uh, number of number of deaths, right? So this is number of deaths this way, the number of wars that have that death. So this is that death toll. This is uh, this is Richardson's work, and I mentioned Richardson the other day. We'll come back to that. Housed in a book called Yeah, um, Deadly Quarrels, right? The, yeah, which is peculiar. Um, the city population, which is another very famous kind of distribution, that is usually not usually there's some good scaling, but it breaks here. Often in Europe, you see this as well, like the, the biggest city is off the chart. So there's, there are arguments about you can have scaling and then you have maybe an isolated one. There's, uh, I'll just say it, um, I don't really understand why it's named this way. I don't, but uh, Didier Sonnet, famous guy at ETH Zurich, calls them Dragon Kings. <laughs> I don't know why, I feel ridiculous saying it. Looks like he rolled some dice and anyway. Um, okay, so I did spend the weekend writing about alignment charts. <laughs> we'll have to talk about it. Oh my God. Um, okay, so just a bunch of examples, right? Books sold, telephone calls received. AT&T was sitting on this data, by the way. They should have known, like networks and how things interact. Oof. They just, there was, they, and there's a reason why that was done, but we'll, we'll talk about it. And there's some very good people there. Okay, so just some examples. These these exponents are all a bit different, and I'll just sort of finish here, I think. But uh, you know, these are tricky things. Um, I know I'm missing the citations. I'll fix it up. Yeah, what are these numbers? Are they really true? I'm just sort of putting these are claims according to these papers. Forest fires, maybe. You know, I don't know. Um, of course, there are errors for these exponents. People have find different things. They change potentially over time. You know, this is the sort of thing you'd hope to explain. Um, you, know, in a, you know, with a physical example, uh, individual wealth, that's a huge maybe. Don't know about that. Tree trunk diameters, that's a good one. So we, we have papers from years ago about um, what we call packing limited growth, which was like little growing circles. And when they hit each other, they stop. And we we're trying to reproduce tree, tree forest structures. It's one of my favorite ridiculous papers. I'll bring it up later. Uh, but this this is roughly, you know, this is, again, very speculative, but it's uh, based on, um, what is it, breast height diameter, right? So you have to figure out on you where the standard height is, like maybe depending on your height, right, there's a standard height, and then you have to go up to trees and, and measure the girth, right? It's a good ecological study, of course, because trees tend not to move around too much, so you can kind of come back and look at them, so you have nice, and this, We'll look at that later on. There's like Barrow, Colorado Island um, in Panama. It's like 50, 30, 40 years now of studying trees. Pretty weird one. Um, if you just transport to a random point in the universe, the probability that that force will be F decays like this. Um, moon craters, I said, word frequency, very famous. Religious adherence in cults. You know that this is the word, but of course, if you go all the way out, you, you're into religion, so that's a bit of a dicey terminology. Um, sightings of birds. Yeah. So now, so these are all these heavy tailed skewed distributions. Whether they're really power laws or not, another issue, but they're definitely these things that have these long tails, and they have this kind of feature of like big things at the top, and then many, depending on the kind of numbering system, you know, if it's citations, there are many objects that have zero citation. Or if it's words in books, you know, many that appear once. And typically, those rare ones are on, a, on the order of a half in terms of just the, the basic list of things. Okay. Another famous one is number of species per genus, which, of course, we imposed early on, and, and we're still messing around with that. Lots of examples. Here's a table for you. Um, and so, yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, Get rid of Talon. Questionable character. Very okay. Okay, so I think that's just. I know it's a lot of examples today, but this is again to just show you there's sort of a whole world of these, and we need to 
try to, um, well, our game will be try to understand them or think about how some of them can be understood. Okay, every awareness, yes. Oh yes, and I changed the office hours, right? So the office hours for this week are a little bit different. Hey, uh, it's, you'll see it in Teams. So hopefully I've got I put in two this week. Sorry if I went, no, I didn't go too long. Uh, two this week, uh, if you can see it here. It should be in, whatever's in Teams is actually correct. So hopefully I've written this down. So I have one on Wednesday and then another one on Thursday. This one is in office. This one will definitely be um, just on Teams. All right, thank you.